and welcome back. We have been joined on set this morning by Dr. Fernando Coyar. He is an internist at the Belize Medical Associates and of course he is a long-standing friend of ours here at Open Your Eyes. Good morning, Good morning Doc. Doc. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you for that nice introduction. The part about the long-standing friend, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel, feel as part of the family here. He just not because me, seated himself. Not because me Lee calls that a... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've always feel attached to Channel 5, for sure. Nice, nice. There is an entire range of topics that we can discuss where health is concerned. Of course. Um, I guess one of the topics that we'll be touching on is the issue of COVID. Right. Many of us have tuned out COVID in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Um, we've gotten to a point where for some of us, we believe as though it's all but behind us. Yeah. And for others, they're still battling day to day with either new infections or the long-term effects of having been infected with COVID right. previously. So that's the first thing I wanted to touch on before we right. get into, you know, other areas of, of right. health that we should focus on. Mm -hmm. COVID, um, where are we with that? Well, COVID is, is here and it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, going away, mm -hmm. you know, and disappear from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. The virus is here. Um, the different mutations will continue. Um, so... Although, if you notice, typically, I mean, they haven't really declared the pandemia over, mm -hmm. the WHO. Um, but we, especially in Belize, have seen a lowering of the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's hence why people have become a bit more, mm -hmm. uh, um, not so worried about COVID. No? But it's here. It's endemic. It will always be here. Mm -hmm. We're still having new infections. Mm -hmm. We are still having people staying home from work because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We're still having people being hospitalized yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. Thankfully, um, we're not seeing the overwhelming numbers, mm -hmm. which is always our fear, not that we get to a lot of people and the hospitals get saturated yeah. and full mm -hmm. up and we don't got bed and nothing. We're not yes. seeing that. Mm -hmm. And the mortality, meaning the amount of people dying from COVID is, is very small mm -hmm. also. Um, that's why people have kind of laxed and put that in the rear view, rear view mirror, now that mm -hmm. it does something like pass, but it's still here and it will be here, you know. Um, one of the things I think Belize has been, I wouldn't want to use the word blessed because mm -hmm. it, it took a lot of effort mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, that the beginning, the first year, the first two years, there was a lot of talk and quarrel and about vaccinations and you no know, boostering and so forth. And although our numbers are not excellent, they're good no, in terms of them, the, the population being, being um, vaccinated and boosted with over 50 percent. So we may want to reach 74, but we're not quite there yet. We are like maybe 15 percent 15 below that. Mm -hmm. But that, that's a decent thing. So I think that has contributed um, greatly to that. I must tell you that um, Myself, you still continue reading and updating about the vaccinations and you've read about some very serious reports coming out about the side effects of the COVID, I mean the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. you, make you, <laughs> you make you even think twice and I say shocks. And I mean one of them where they order they yeah. promote. Championing. The ch and then yeah. you, you see the, 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 the side effects it has given people. But still it, it's, a, it's a risk analysis, no? Comparing the amount of people that has gotten illnesses from the vaccination and so compared to those who didn't, it's, it's still a big difference. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the world did well, Belize did well in promoting the vaccination to the extent that it did, no? Let me do ask you, a, go ahead. Um, do, you, do you believe that we have, um, we have become a little bit um, complacent in how we uh, keep tabs on the information of COVID, just given the last week's um, misinformation yeah, that was spreading yeah, yeah. around. Yes, I, I, I do think, but it's not so much, I think, the authorities' fault because they're mm -hmm. still very on top of things. Mm -hmm. I think people just get one he's sick, one he flu, one he cold, and they don't get tested. So the amount that's testing has gone down. So it, the, what the numbers we're seeing is, is, is not reflecting the, real, the reality, no? Mm -hmm. Because of the, the lowering of the testing. Not because 
then they cook the book third. Oh, but why are we why are we continuing that culture of if I get sick I don't want to go get tested? Isn't that supposed to be our new <laughs> sense of reality? Yes. I mean, it just needs that. Okay, you have to I go get a COVID just, test. I think that's just human nature. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. have gotten really exhausted, really fatigued about go get testing and and all of that. No, so. I got one leave on the nose, one leave headache, one leave fevers, and mm -hmm. the symptoms now are general milder, so you know, they don't feel like they need to go get tested as such. So. Mm -hmm. Let's go okay. back a bit, Doc. You were mentioning earlier having read up on literature that discusses the side effects of the COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. Three years around this time, we were preparing for what would have become an inevitability that the spread of the COVID virus from China would propagate across the world, actually, right? And within that period of time, scientists were working over time diligently to try to get a handle on the spread and, of course, to see how it can be either prevented or treated with properly. Mm -hmm. And in all of that came the vaccine. And so while it may have been a scientific breakthrough in the first instance, very quickly, a lot of other big pharma companies began producing their own vaccine, which led to a general question being asked. Is it safe, considering the amount of time and research and testing that was put into yeah. any of these number of vaccines? And you look in hindsight, and it brings us to where we are in terms yeah. of side effects. That's, that's a good point. Um, and I think that's the sticking point right there. No? That's, mm -hmm. that's the, the common critique of that vaccine mm -hmm. that came out back in 21 mm -hmm. and 20. How safe this vaccine is mm -hmm. when this thing just, this COVID just appeared on the, on, on the map a year ago, okay? If we go even back we as one country, we as Belizeans, we were a, a good vaccination group. We, mm -hmm. we, our vaccination numbers for childhood diseases mm -hmm. were, was very high. We used mm -hmm. to break. Mm -hmm. We yeah. still break within the upper 80s, 90s for mm -hmm. measles, mumps, rubella, mm -hmm. tetanus, mm -hmm. all of these childhood diseases. And everybody was good. Nobody made make no fuss about go read up about what the MMR does to people and those kinds of things. But the sticking point, and of course, we got information travels Very fast like that now, now. we mm -hmm. got the social media and so mm -hmm. everybody got exposed to outside information about this vaccine might not be safe because mm -hmm. it was quickly developed mm -hmm. but there's a reason for that we have learned how to make vaccines faster mm -hmm. okay technology has taught us how yeah. to make vaccine faster and i always tell people the next virus will come around the vaccine will get even make faster yeah mm -hmm. So if you take one year to make this last one, it can take six months to make this one. Why? Because most of these vaccines have the, the common um, foundation. foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it done the day. Mm -hmm. And then what they do, they test it and they just leave to put on the, the ceiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So instead of have to pile and put foundation and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, they just put on the roof and then bam. Mm -hmm. So you would expect and, uh, that next go wrong, um, hopefully not in our lifetime, um, we will say that these vaccines are even develop, developing faster. What are we yeah. um, looking at in terms of the, the virus itself and its mutations in terms of variants? Yeah, we are looking at, we are expecting it to continue mutating like any other virus, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. And especially um, what it happened in China right now where you just, psh, remember they got from zero COVID? So yeah, they bust out we that still because lockdown yeah. a couple months ago. And, and because the virus they multiply so quickly and so virus later when the chances of it mutating is, is higher, no? Okay, mm -hmm. so we, we should expect. And that's why they need to do not only testing, we need to do the genome testing, check out the virus and make sure that nothing will change that much. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's the the, verse, the the virus itself has a purpose to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then say, well, then don't catch me on this one yeah, so I'll try to change or leave it so they don't catch me mm -hmm. this other way, no? Are okay. we um are we looking to see another high um 
the, the way the scale is going, um, and I'm looking at us starting in January again. It was very dormant for some time. Yeah. We're seeing the numbers go up. Are we expected to see? No, we don't. We don't expect for see numbers like before. Okay. We see we, it's here. We see humps here and there, mm -hmm. especially around the end time, December, mm -hmm. January, mm -hmm. when there was a lot of people coming together. Yeah. And then of course, um, I do have to put the plugging of the flu. Mm -hmm. The flu. I mean, we the have seasonal the flu. seasonal yeah, flu that. That complicate things. Can you just can't look on somebody and hear their symptoms and say this is a flu and this is a COVID. You have mm -hmm. to do your testing. Mm -hmm. you know? um, in the States, you heard about the trifecta, the RSV, the respiratory sensitive virus, which mm -hmm. was even complicating that more. So then they have only two things for about it, three things <laughs> for about Okay, And yeah. we never seem to have been bothered by that. But we should, um, we should still have in mind, mind COVID. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, I think humankind, mankind has done well in managing this pandemia overall. Never forget the, the, the public health measures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that even played a big role or bigger role than the vaccines in yeah. terms of prevention. No, Wash your hands, use your face masks, mm -hmm. social, although distancing. social distance. Although, lad, for tell someone, remember back in the days of yeah. talk about face, I mean, face mask use, I mean, uh, I like, like, tell somebody <laughs> like, like racism yeah. Yeah. or a political statement, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at this. A few takeaways from the overall COVID experience um, at the beginning of the pandemic and where we are now. I think at the very beginning of the pandemic, because COVID was such a novel thing for us, yeah. we weren't. I mean, coronavirus has been around in various Correct. forms, forms. Mm -hmm. from the beginning. But COVID-19 was new to us. It was a, a novelty. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it forced a lot of us to draw on whatever available information to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. But the process of doing so worked both ways, right? We, in one instance, educated ourselves. But in another instance, it allowed for misinformation because we're not going to credible sources with vetted information to be able to learn from. Right. The, the availability of, of, of articles being written on COVID was all over social media, all over the internet in various forms and what have you. And people, because of that, walked away feeling as if though they knew. Mm -hmm. When in all honesty, what the World Health Organization was saying and what the CDC was saying was very basic in terms of the processes and the steps that we needed to take. Mm -hmm. But people just went off into a frenzy yeah. and figured, you know yeah. what, it's the end of time. Yeah. Well, it's not just ordinary people. Mm -hmm. I will tell you myself, and I think I alluded to it just now, my friends looked at some serious articles and, mm -hmm. and, and from sources that you thought was very reputable yeah. and, and, and congressional hearings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. brand name scientists and people that you recognize. And they were saying some negative things quite a bit about the vaccines and you mm -hmm. would have to ask yourself. And I said, shocks, did I do, did I myself or Nando mm -hmm. err in championing so much the vaccine? Mm -hmm. But when you look at this greater scheme of things, and again, when you look at everything together, the, 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 the information stands more on the benefits mm -hmm. of the vaccine more than the, the side effects, no? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So I, I am still one of those who will still tell people, make sure that you're properly, you have your boosters yeah. and all yeah. like that, no? But I think that yeah. it, that works in anything that is, <laughs> that is created by, by man or by science. When we talk about any kind of, of medis medical trial, yeah. there will be a, a side effect even when you are now taking certain mm. prescriptions you're like well yeah. you know nausea this this and that you have to be wary of etc don't take your pills with alcohol and people still do it and then they wonder why they're still sick mm -hmm. so it's um i think that if and when the next variant comes mm -hmm. out depending on the strength of it depending on how it affects people I would suspect that there would be another booster, and then I would suspect that there would be other side effects, and I would suspect that there would be 20% of the population that will take it because the rest tied up with stuff in that empire. Yeah. So what can we, what should we be looking forward to 
in terms of not just COVID, but um, other health ramifications for this 2023? Well, that would lead us to the more general discussion about health in terms mm -hmm. of, um, I would want to mention first what we call the non-communicable diseases, no? Mm -hmm. The, the, the hypertension diabetes. and the diabetes mm -hmm. and the high cholesterol and the obesity, mm -hmm. okay, that lead to complications such as stroke, heart attacks, which are still top the list in terms of why people go and get hospitalized and why they die and those, those kinds of things. You know? So we still need to put emphasis by people taking care of themselves um, eating as healthy as possible, mm -hmm. um, exercising regularly, manage your stress. And <laughs> I have come to a new level in terms of that because I just went through a, a, a damning situation when it comes to health. Mm -hmm. And I actually had one of my toes amputated because either the first one was saying, look, Panane, they sit on the talk and they tell people where for those and go and do the exact opposite of you. <laughs> okay, so I, I had one. One, one issue within the past two months so uh, it's 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 life is hard life is real but you do have to come out taking care of yourself for yourself and your family mm -hmm. for sure i think <coughs> touching on the issue of diabetes yeah that has long been referred to as a silent killer mm -hmm. but it has to do with the lifestyle choices that we make right uh, many of us eat unhealthy, we engage in drinking and socializing and not necessarily looking after our body and, and we're not mindful of how <clears throat> our bodies are responding to the way we live. I say the way we live because it includes all of the above, mm -hmm. right? And when you look at the number of persons within our small population who are battling diabetes, it's alarming. Correct. It's alarming. Yeah. And I don't know if enough is being done to sensitize the public of how this sickness is ravaging our numbers. Yeah, um, I would say definitely enough is not being done. Um, I will start from the authorities. Mm -hmm. um, they could always be uh, better. Um, other organizations mm -hmm. should also play a role. Everywhere should play a role. The, the employers, the institutions, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere, everywhere you turn, it should be at least a daily mention of, listen, mm -hmm. eat healthy and exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. with, um, no cigarette smoking, no tobacco smoking, reduce your alcohol intake and do exercise. So uh, you can't put the onus on one somebody and point the finger, mm -hmm. oh, government, no, they do enough, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but that, because that's not the case, you are responsible at the end of the day for your whole health, no? Mm -hmm. And you have to also, I think if we, maybe what I think our bigger strategy or a stronger strategy could be, make we start from the pick the day. Mm -hmm. Make we start from we young, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like how I sit down again, and I'm, I'm like this, that we become more civic minded. You see mm -hmm. the banners like, you hear your anthem, you respect yeah. your anthem, yeah. your flag, that kind of thing, other Lee Belizeans, but we more. You also from the picnic day from primary school, do I think they do do they have in their curriculums some type of, mm -hmm. of discussion about about these things but drill it in anymore no drill it in anymore and not got the you, know, you talk about it but right outside the gate you got people sell sweet <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 and that kind of thing and that's so often the that's often yeah, so the situation yeah. right <coughs> is that we preach one thing and then do something else in, in one You're breath. You're a mashmikan, my brother. I think that's everybody. Right? Everybody, everybody does it. We can't talk about healthy eating and healthy living and then right in front of us, you know, right in we're, front consuming, of the school, yeah, we're consuming all the wrong all things. All sugars right? and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Huh? Given the light of, our, of the two years that we endured and I guess um, COVID affecting more persons with um, pre-existing conditions and so forth, um, in your own field, have you seen more persons be, be more um, obliged to go do daily checkups and so the doctor? There was a stigma against medical doctors prior to COVID, and I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't want to see. Yeah, yeah. Do we, are we seeing people more um, yeah, taking care of Yeah, we are health? definitely seeing a change. The yeah. process is going slow, <laughs> unfortunately, mm -hmm. with a while go faster. 
but we are doing see, we are do seeing people coming for annual checkups mm -hmm. on a more regular basis. Um, I like some of the companies, some of the institutions, especially the, the public utilities people. They would mm -hmm. they would um, tell their employees they have to go in for annual checkup. And one of the strategies they use is it, they tie it into the the early um, bonuses. bonuses and uh, appraisals, appraisals and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. No, like. You gain points mm -hmm. yeah. in your appraisal form if you could show mm -hmm. that you did your annual checkup, no? And it's it's you have to tell people and maybe we should. There's a lot of those jobs, yeah. Doc, are sedentary work. They sit down whole day, right? And then we have this culture where from the moment we walk into the office at eight o'clock, we're thinking about what we're gonna have for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and every all those hours in between we're sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> After lunch, we come back in and go oh, by 2.30, we want a snack. Yeah. But we're still sitting down on work. Unhealthy snack at that mm -hmm. now. Yeah, so all of that, it, that's why I say, you know, in order for, for look at the government and the, the, the for, for, for do more for, for incestitized people, you know, it comes all across the board. And I, again, I think that if you do it at the primary school level, you understand a better chance that mm -hmm. the, the next generation will be hopefully on a healthier generation, no? Yeah. Okay. Where are we... Um, because we got back way, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For we, grandpa and grandma, never got car. <laughs> they had to walk and go to a plantation. They were more there. active. They were very more active. And you go to a market, pan bicycle, mm -hmm. and you get on treat if you could take one taxi. Mm -hmm. and but now we live in a world where we want yeah. life to be easier. You we don't remote, want to move. You got remote for final and remote, not sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we need that. But we don't want that, right? Yeah. We, w we don't want to do the hard work. Why would I do the hard work when there is a machine that is there to help me or there is a car that can take me to point A to point B? Yeah, so unfortunately. Where are we in terms of um, moving, uh, and I guess this is more particularly to, to your knowledge as a, as, a, um, as a doctor, but in terms of educating the grander public about certain um, pre-existing conditions and um, other diseases that are out there? Well, um, myself particularly, I've been criticized or been told that I, I like I like seeing myself on TV, but I try to use any opportunity, any platform I can to have these types at least the discussion, not to mm -hmm. tell the wider community, listen, take care of themselves. Um, we have to mention thing the the, the dreaded cancer word. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 here. It's we having a lot of people with cancer. Mm -hmm. It's tied to things like obesity, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of cancers that. When when um, diagnosed early, you can take of it care of it real good, no? Like breast cancer, um, cervical cancer, colon mm -hmm. cancer, those kinds of things. And you do have routine checkups that can pick it up early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, uh, we have technologies now in Belize. We don't have to travel um, afar to, mm -hmm. to have yeah. one, a nice mammogram done or a colonoscopy done or a prostate examination done mm -hmm. or uh, pap smear done and and it's done really really of high quality no mm -hmm. okay um it would be remiss for me to put in one plug about the institution i work mm -hmm. um a medical it's it, we do a heavy investment in, in in the type of technology to to, to screen for these cancers not the digital mammogram why I could I did practice thirty years and <laughs> money is a far difference on eh? yeah. the Do you have to be updated? To, 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 to the anything where they know the, the C T machines, everything digital, mm -hmm. ultrasound, the lab tests, the lab so it, it did require quite a bit of investment, no? Mm -hmm. So while um, there's a while there is that investment in modern and up to date technology right. The onus essentially is on the public, is on all of us to be able to go in and get checked Take out. advantage of it. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's there. Okay. And, and I think myself, I mentioned myself, the institution I work, we have an, a medical and dental association mm -hmm. that does it best to try to, to sensitize people to. Um, you guys are in the media. You would know what would be the biggest form of communication. Do we put up these big signs again? And on the leaving Belize city or coming into the mm -hmm. airport, or do we use social platforms? Um, all of the above. All of the yeah. above. Mm -hmm. 
maybe social platform that we for going once you put down your 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 Facebook so they're gonna come up get tested no I mean you did come on this show yeah. the last time and so. you you gave your um your cry for a uh, 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 was it an MRI? Uh huh. CT scanner. CT scanner. Mm. Um, I still cry. You still cry, <laughs> but <laughs> it it they seem that they're going to be making uh, waves and and leeways to get it up and going. Yeah, but um, still criticizable because that damn thing should be delayed a long time. I mean, if you're not delayed by this evening four o'clock, that will day last. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know because those things are quite. Just like you go you go buy one one tire. The Caribbean tires, you go putting gas, man, that no need for... It's for a part of the daily function. That, uh, like, it's come expected. On, come on, yeah. so And I've been warm, I've mm -hmm. been warm. My colleagues said, why... One of the things that humbug you, like, stress yourself out about everything, chill. <laughs> but <laughs> it really... I can't feel comfortable not saying these things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay? Yeah. Because we in the <coughs> private institution, we only take care of a certain percentage of the population, whether mm -hmm. like 20 to maybe 20, 30 As percent. You would say the ones yes. who could afford 70 yes. percent of yes. Belizeans mm -hmm. don't have access to yes. this. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it should have been done already. Mm -hmm. If you come today, it's too late. Mm -hmm. If you come tomorrow, it was not too late. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think that speaks so to the broader issue of healthcare reform though mm. because how do we have such a robust public health system when we don't have some of the fundamental things in place to be able to <laughs> deal with this so-called 70 percent of the population well that would well, I need one, one session by itself <laughs> 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 but one of the things that I, I, and I've got <coughs> pushed back and criticized and, and even politicized um, you know everything that politics mm -hmm. I believe is when you say one thing you know. but I think at least for a while the person who heads the health care which is a minister of health mm -hmm. should have a medical background mm -hmm. okay um, you could have one person there where it says that they listen to advice but advice is given from all corners mm -hmm. advice is given many times with, with certain interests in place mm -hmm. so but come on I think the, the government's should 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 if put in law that the minister of health should have a medical background just like how the attorney general should be a lawyer should, should ha have to be should a, have lawyer. a legal background okay, have one legal. you can't have an attorney general without, without well if that were the case okay well if that were the case well, they would have yeah. to do so for all, all of the them report and we should well and we should in the I past that means that the minister of housing have to be an architect or engineer well, or the agriculture. The previous minister yeah. of okay. health was an electrician by trade. <laughs> <laughs> so that so speaks volumes, to and so on and so forth. I'm only using that as an example, but if that were the case, then everybody who holds public office in a certain capacity ought to be qualified to administer the operations there. What do you think? Yes. I've been a proponent for that. Yes. In my humble Lupa profession, I believe that a journalist should be properly trained and, and qualified. Agriculture, right now, how, mm -hmm. how, how it is step up, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ballet, um, Abelardo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abelardo, my... Exactly. Because, because that's, he, a, he that's a proper he alignment of... for your background. Yeah, he don't know precisely. everything, but he knows, precisely. he knows a lot. He knows his core. He knows the he foundation. Knows what, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. He could come in one morning and say, boy, let's go see where they go on with, with citrus, where they go on. Similarly... Or peanuts. Similarly with the Minister of Tourism right now. He comes from a tourism background and marketing, so he understands understands correct the that sort of thing yeah but the next conversation <laughs> for another time yes. dr fernando we are we have to finish Man, i time know time fast, flies man. so fast but you're welcome to come back anytime sure, it's sure. done to be our next topic that i hold we over for our next 40 <laughs> minutes uh thank you so much for coming in this morning and of course be updated um on the uh covid and, and thanks the for the invitation and of course um the role that you guys play Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. With that, we're going to take another break and we're going to be discussing the Amnesty Mobile Clinics. Stay tuned.